Many of you may know that at the early part of the 20th century, there was a devastating explosion involving a Zeppelin, basically a, a blimp that actually carried people. Um, it was actually an active form of transportation at the time. Um, and there's an iconic image of this explosion happening that you can actually see in this slide I have here, the Hindenburg disaster. Um, and the reason for this explosion was that this immense volume, this immense balloon, was filled with hydrogen. And many of you know that hydrogen is very reactive with oxygen. Okay, the two of them like to get together and form, drum roll, water. Right, very simple, very simple chemistry. Um, and so you might be wondering, why were people so dumb? Obviously, like if you fill this big balloon with a whole bunch of hydrogen, the tiniest chance that there's a leak is going to create a devastating reaction that's going to create the picture that you see here in this slide. Um, and so the answer is they took the risk because hydrogen is the lightest element. And why is that helpful? Well, just like when you submerge an object in water, if you put an object in air, there's going to be a buoyant force. Actually, we take up a certain volume in air, and there's a slight uh, uh, buoyant force on us that we just barely recognize, right? It's very small, um, but at least relative to our own weights. Um, but if you have something like a big giant balloon, right? A big giant balloon that takes up tons of volume, right? Which is basically a Zeppelin or a blimp, okay? Then the weight of all the air, right, that that balloon displaces is going to create a buoyant force going up, right? And of course, that balloon also has its own weight going down. But as long as that buoyant force up, okay, is greater or at least equal to the weight of the whole th thing, including, you know, the gas that's inside of it, right, as long as B equals W, you have an, an object that floats in the air, all right? And so the, the whole deal is you want to reduce the weight as much as possible, right, so that it doesn't exceed this buoyant force, and hydrogen helps with that, okay? So let's take a look at uh, basically exploring the buoyancy of the Zeppelin with this problem. Okay, so <clears throat> um, it says normally a Goodyear airship contains about uh, 5.4 times 10 to the 3 meters cubed of helium. So obviously, we switched to helium because it's much safer. It's a noble gas. And it's not that much heavier than hydrogen. You'd think that they would just go for the thing that doesn't react with anything before they would go for the thing that wants to react with almost everything. So I don't know. But anyways, that just basically tells us that our volume, right, the volume of this, of this airship is about 5.4 times 10 to the 3 meters cubed, okay? Um, and the density of helium, right, so density of HE is going to be about 0.179 kilograms per meters cubed, right? Compare that with water, which is 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed, right? Much lighter, um, <clears throat> much less dense. So find the weight of the load that the airship can carry. So the weight of the load is basically you know, whatever it's carrying, how much, how much extra um, is available, right? Given this point for us, how much load can you actually add on here, people, cargo, whatever, such that this equality still holds, okay? So, so here, you're going to have the, both the weight of the helium inside there, but you're also going to have this W, this weight of the load, okay? And this is what we want to find out. Given this, right, what is the weight of the load such that this balloon can still float in the air? All right. So in order to solve this problem, we do what we always do. We look at forces and see how they balance, right? So if my only force going up, and I, you know, if I'm going to be technically really correct, I want to say summation of forces and y equals zero. That's equilibrium, that's, that's uh, balanced forces, right? So what force is going up? Well, my buoyancy force here, which is B, okay? Um, and what forces are going down? Well, the weight of the helium, right? And the weight of the load, 
right? And that just means that the buoyant force must equal the weight of the helium plus the weight of the load. Now, some people just jump straight to this step. At this point in my physics career, I do jump to this step. But if you want to remind yourself of where this comes from, you're really just doing uh, an analysis of Newton's second law, right? Okay. Now, what is the buoyant force? Well, the buoyant force is the weight of the air, right, that, that would have been here in this volume, okay? So that's going to be the density of air, right, times the volume of the Zeppelin times gravity, right? Um, yeah, and they give us, they tell us also the density of the air in this problem is 1.2 kilograms per meters cubed. All right, so that's interesting. That means that if you have an empty box, right, that's a, a meters cubed, the air in there actually still weighs 1.2 kilograms. That's not trivial, okay? Um, so that has to equal the weight of the helium. Well, what's the weight of the helium? Well, that's going to be the density of the helium times the volume that the helium takes up times gravity, right? And the weight of the load here is what we're solving for, okay? So let's plug this in. The density of air is 1.2, right? The volume is 5.4, right? Remember, this is the whole volume of the helium is basically the volume of the Zeppelin, right? It's how much space the Zeppelin takes up in the air, or the blimp in this case. So that's going to be 5.4 times 10 to the 3 times 9.8, right? And we know that the volume or the density of the helium is 0 0.179 times also 5.4 times 10 to the 3, right? So the volume of the helium takes up is, the, again, the volume of the blimp um, times 9.8 plus the weight of the load. So Presumably, if I just multiply these, multiply these, subtract this over to the other side, I have the weight of the load. <clears throat> and according to my calculations, I get that the weight of the load should be about 54,031 um, newtons. Okay? And... If I want to find out how many kilograms that is, well, like what mass I can carry, I would just obviously divide by 9.8. But this was the calculation that folks have to make when they're making a blimp and they want to know, you know, how much weight do I have to carry? Well, that's going to tell you something about the volume that you're going to have to pick for that blimp so that you can carry that load. Now, the folks who were designing the Zeppelins to have hydrogen, right? They knew that this density here, this would be the density of hydrogen instead, right? And so if that was even a little bit less, they could increase that load. But I'm just going to go ahead and say on the record, it's not worth it. Not worth it.